Welcome everybody to my only. I mean, sorry, this is the final oh. one for everybody. <laughs> oh, oh! Welcome to the final whistle. You know, I gotta Man, get started oh, no, already. Early, you know, you know, already started with the OnlyFans joke. This is what we do here at the final whistle, the one and only show where you get family sports recap, talk, in depth analysis with the All Star crew, and as you can see. We are locked and loaded with the all-star panel. Let me start at my top right, Mr. Chris James, a.k.a. Dan's Brick Brother. How are you today, sir? Man, I'm lovely, man. I'm lovely. We coming off a win against Old Miss, baby. So, you know, Ooh, we're we going to talk three. about it. We're going to talk about it. And next to him, we got the only Mr. Kick.com content creator himself, Coach Smooth. What's good, know, man? man? What's good? Ooh. I'm good, brother. I'm ready. I'm ready to talk about it, man. I'm just let's go. I'm trying. Yeah, let's get to it. And everybody, final whistle, Dan. I lead recruiting analyst. These nuts. Uh, <laughs> dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Co-founder. How you doing, Dan? I'm always good, brother. You know what I'm saying? There's a train uh, that's sweeping through Mississippi. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Speaking of trains, I'm quite sure you had plenty of them. Mr. Justin Riley, <laughs> how are you doing, man? Justin Riley, the hardest working man. How are you, sir? We are the mega stars. Whose game is it with everybody saying the, the final, final whistle? whistle. Yeah. Oh, yes, roll sir. tide, everybody. Yeah, roll tide, roll tide. And we got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Lushine. Our top fan. We're gonna move him from top fan to top analyst. Lucian, how are you, sir? You know, Bama Nation, how you doing tonight? Let's get it started. I'm excited. Yeah, let's, let's get go. it started. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bartu Sports, reach around the table. Around the table sports. The male gigolo, I mean, he does it all. Mr. Ty Hayes, how are you, my brother? <laughs> Man, I can't complain. A great win against Old Miss. I'm going to back it up with another big win against Mississippi State. Ooh, basically, mm. that's how we're going to do it, people. And it's like, hey, let's talk mm. about it. You know, we had the big game versus Old Miss. But before we get started, all the fans get in that comment section. Hit that like, subscribe button. Um, Van Edwards, I know you out there got all the Pete Golden jokes. Pete Golden, show yourself in the comments section. Uh, but, <laughs> but speaking of Pete Golden, uh, I told y'all about them showers. You did talk about Pete Golden showers. Let's talk about the game real quick. You know, <laughs> let's let's repeat your feet. Your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we are cut it off. Since we beat. Pete, let's let's talk about it. Um, Justin, I'll start with you. We'll kind of go around the horn. Let's give me your thoughts about you know us beating up on the old lane train uh and Pete Golden. Man, first of all, being in Mississippi, I greatly appreciate the tide rolling this past weekend. I was amongst Ole Miss fans Saturday, so I was in dangerous territory, but Man, nerve-wracking first half. Looked like we forgot how to football. Looked like we had some life when a Ja'Cory Brooks sighting happened and he blocked that punt. We get the ball at the one-yard line only to get in the pistol and lose 20-plus yards. We the sell the field goal. Not even a And pistol. the Will Riker, the greatest kicker in America, bails us out. But the second half was what I really was fond of, seeing us have that wake-up moment. Terry on Arnold starting things off, that big interception. Jalen Milrow coming in there after he has so much doubt, so much hate. I was cu catching a lot of that hate in Twitter because earlier I was really pumping him up, and I kept on getting these little uh, replies, update, question mark, update. Well, in the second half, the update was he got nearly decapitated, but in the process connects on a beautiful touchdown to Jalen Hale, a thing of beauty. He gets up and shakes it off. He's celebrating. Next thing I know, the whole team is going nuts. <laughs> and guys, we put our foot on their throats. They were done. And I enjoyed every single second of it. And I really enjoyed seeing, and we'll talk about this later, the emergence of Kendrick Blackshire. Oh, I love it. Uh, Lushan, what are your thoughts, you know, um, about the game? You know, uh, a couple things stood out to me uh, that I saw. It was uh, specifically the Bama attitude. 
Not so much in the first half, but in, the, in that third quarter, I felt like Malachi Moore brought the troops out on a mission. And I felt like it's important that the players in the locker room really observed how he played in the second half because he played it with all he had. And it turned our defense, as you saw, as we're going to highlight later, our linebackers started to look like the bullies of old time. I'm not saying they're there yet. They still got a lot of work to do, but I felt like Saturday was a, a come to Jesus moment. And uh, I feel like our boys may have turned the corner. We're going to see this weekend though. I feel like we're going to get it done. I agree. Speaking of getting done, our analysts around the table, Ty Hayes, let me get your thoughts, you know, from just a high level view of what you saw mainly the second half of this team, you know, I, we know the debacle of the first half, but let me get your thoughts on the second half of uh, Alabama. Y'all have no idea how irate mm. I was in that first half, because one of the things I was upset about coming off of that USF game is we didn't learn anything about the quarterbacks behind Jalen Milrow, anything conducive to success in that game. And we took away snaps from Milrow. That was always going to be problematic, and I think that's a large reason why you had those struggles in the first half. I'm going to hit this donation real fast before we continue. Brandon Clear with the 999. Thank you so much for being here, my man. He says, roll tide. How do we continue to utilize our receiver and tight end talent during Jalen's development as a passer? I'd hate to see it diminish with the ground and pound. Gentlemen, if, if we don't mind, I'd like to open this up to everybody real quick with a, a, a quick response. We can go around the room and, and, and I'll start it off very quickly. Brandon, I understand one thing that really stood out to me, he connected with 10 different guys in the passing game. Mm. So they are spreading the ball around. And I actually think one of the things I talk about on my channel all the time, if you have a brand new quarterback, check. If you have a brand new offensive coordinator, check. Great tight end play, great running back play can be a new quarterback's best friend. And especially in this offense, 12 personnel could be Bama's best friend. I'm going to toss it to the panel for that. Um, but I, I think that Jalen Milrow is right on track. I'll go. I agree with the personnel. I think, I, you know, I think it's to our advantage moving forward, especially when you got SEC play. We got Texas A&M. We got LSU. We got to go to Jordan Hare. I think all this plays for our advantage, whereas defenses are going to be licking their chops saying, oh, Bama, they can't throw the ball and all this stuff. And if we continue to get in the lab with Reese and Miro and really get on point with these receivers, like you said, Ty Hayes, he's throwing to 10 different receivers. You never know who's going to get hot. You never know who, which game is going to be. So I think that plays in our advantage moving forward. And I do think – we continue to, you know, ground and pound and run the ball, play action, continue to get creative. I think that helps our offense moving forward and helps the confidence of Jalen Miro. Um, so yeah, I'll pass it to uh Chris. I think it yeah, on that on that question there, man. I um the way to keep the the to keep everybody um involved, um to keep their attention is by spreading the ball around. You never know when your number is being called. So if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, like Dan says all the time. But um, just just being a part of the offense, it's fun being in the offense that you know that the ball is going to be spread around. Like if you're in one of those offenses where you run it 40 times, you know the, this guy's going to get 40 carries, and you may get a ball, may get a ball every other game. You know, then it's easier to check out. But when um, you're making plays, they're going to find you. The ball always finds the playmakers. When you make mm -hmm. plays, the ball will find you. So – um, just being engaged and everything, it shouldn't be hard to keep those guys um, engaged, especially when you're winning. So, um, because usually by <clears throat> October is when you start to find the guys that are going to be your your go-to guys, your playmakers that's going to carry you, you know, through that um, tough uh, October November conference um, slate stretch. So, um, just by being um, being ready, you know. Go ahead, Justin. Well, Chris, I have a surprise for you. I have a surprise for the entire panel right now. We have one of the most elite secondaries in the country, correct? Correct. Well, I have somebody who is jumping on right now who was a part of some of the most elite secondaries in Alabama history, and that is one of the baddest men to ever play in the secondary. Daquan Menzies. Oh, my God. DQ. Georgia boy. What up? What up? What up? Oh, we got some what up? What up? feedback. <laughs> What up, sci-fi? 
<laughs> Man, glad to have you on. I, I wasn't expecting Man, this, but guys. <laughs> SECB radio tracking all them uh, high speed and on the street. Uh, he, he must be on high speed city. chase. One <laughs> <laughs> alert, one alert. Hey. It might be the headset, bro. bro. So it well, might be the headset. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy. What's up, boy? Look at him. <laughs> hey, me. Hey, y'all know me and this boy go back, Mike. Like elementary school back back in the day, Fort Benning. He told, me, he told me he was taking your lunch back then. Nah, we was jumping on people back then. That's when we had a lot of with the mini head boys, man. We <laughs> need to have DQ jump out and jump back in. We're getting some static going on. So if you could do that, brother, that would be great. That's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, and Coach Smooth, I want to get your thoughts. Um, on the 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 comment, the yeah, the comment the super chat. Okay. Um I think, like I said at the beginning of the season, guys, I don't think y'all remember when I pointed out uh, everybody was asking who would be our thousand yard receiver this, that, and third. I was adamant about the fact that we wouldn't have one one thousand yard receiver. I said we would have, you know, big game receivers. We would have, you know, every every once in a while. But I thought it would be a receiver, uh, uh, receiver by committee, and I thought Jalen Miro would be able to touch that three k, you know, thirty four hundred yard passing mark and. Honestly, if he would have played USF game, he probably would have been on pace to, you know, really strongly push for that and been further in his comfortable, how comfortable he is with that time and with that group of receivers. Because I think we went like six or seven deep as far as the rotation um, this past game. I saw Kendrick Law, I saw Hale, I saw uh, Prentice, I saw Barnes. I mean, everybody, the usuals, and to see Hale. And I didn't see Knee Black put his hands in the ground a lot. So you you see where that's transitioning to, um, which I think is just providing more time for Shaz Preston to, to be that, that rotational guy for that big split that we're going to see later in the season. So um, I, I think this this group is really just engaged, man. To see Robbie Oots get targeted, you know, a design play to where he was targeted um, and, and was able to make a big play, you know, and CJ Dupree, his big play, to get that uh, first down conversion when we were backed up against our goal line, um, that was those were big, big play moments. And the receiving group, including the tight ends, I feel like they they are locked in and they like they've been since game one since Middle Tennessee State. They're locked in and they're they're uh, performing up the standard. I agree. And uh, Dan, you round us out. What are what are some of the highlights um, that Pause. you saw from the? Uh, <laughs> From from the game Saturday, us beating Miss Ole Miss. Well, yeah. Well, I want to make a comment on uh, Brandon Clear. Uh, this comment. Yeah. Uh, I, I I agree with him, but the thing is, we're 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 behind the eight ball right now. So we're, what we're still trying to do, you know, is is establish this offensive identity because we we, you know, we put ourselves in this situation. Oh. We, my. We we got to de- determine. We still determining who our playmakers are, which we have several of them. But we got to figure out how to make it all come together. But we we're gonna have to rely on the run. We, that's 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 clear that we're gonna definitely have to rely on the run. But uh, as far as the game goes, the second half, you know, it 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 uh it cleared me because man, I was I was ready to turn off the TV. You know what I'm saying? I was ready to mm. step away from final whistle. <laughs> no, 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 no. But uh, yeah, the second half, I I, I love the aggressive play calling. I, I I I love that. So maybe I may begin to like Tommy Reese a little bit, just a little bit, just, just a little bit. Just right a little now. bit. He started to actually figure some things out and figure himself right. out in the second half. I think the I think the biggest thing is just uh, continue to feed the hot hand. You know, if it's the backs doing their thing, do it. Jason yeah. McClellan finally was allowed to eat, and we saw what he could do. I absolutely love that. And after Jay, uh, Jalen Milrose, Ron Tidwell a moment, I think that's when he went over not just the team, but he went over the fans. Everybody finally said, okay, that's our guy. Now he can officially step forward and lead, and he can dictate how the offense goes. So we're going to start seeing the offense, how it's supposed to look. And, yeah, some games we may run that rock, and the receivers may not get a whole lot of love, but then there are some games where we'll be lighting the skies up. I agree. Speaking of – oh, <laughs> David Kendall shouts out for $2. Justin 
and smoothly to swap sides on the screen. Dang, man. Dang. They used well, to be in his corner, I guess. Hey, the, DQ is back. Hopefully, the, we'll, uh, the CB radio is done. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Take two, DQ. Before we kind of start things out, tell us what you saw at the Ole Miss game. What would you like? What would you not like? How did you, you come away feeling after that game? Well, you know, me being in Mississippi, bro, um, <laughs> I feel it's, you. It's kind of, you know what I mean? It's kind of tough, uh, you know, during the governor. He's uh, – because I work for the governor now. And he's a big uh, Mississippi State Ole Miss fan. So, uh, you know, I got bragging rights right now, bro. So, um, <laughs> so I get to talk a little bit of mess there and there. But, uh, you know, man, I've I seen great things, bro. You know, we still got a long way to go. Um, I know D-line played a lot better. D-line played a lot better this game, bro. Um, secondary. Secondary is what's impressive this game to me. And um, – and that's because of the D line's play, right. it's because of the linebackers play, bro. The the D line is the foundation um, of the defense, just like the offensive line is the foundation of the offense. You know what I mean? If they get it going, then the whole team is just you know is would be perfect, bro. So man, I, I seen a lot of good things, bro. Um, Campbell, uh, linebacker Blackshire, mm -hmm. um, those guys uh, had key moments, bro. Um, um, like I said, the secondary, Terrion Arnold is coming along, bro. And he might be better. This is a take now. He Ooh, might be uh, better than uh, Kool-Aid. Uh, this Q in my oh, – wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Listen. No, no. All right, no, right here. Because Ooh, when I you're said on center stage, CQ, crazy. go ahead. When right. I said it, I was crazy. Y'all listen. Terrion Arnold, bro, might be our best corner, bro, that we have on the team on the field right now, bro, on the team. Chat. Facts. When I said it, I was crazy. When I said it, I was crazy. Seriously, bro. Why do you like, say I that? Agree. You, you just can't uh, say it. Give, give us a little meat behind it, man. Wait, wait, hey, okay. Matt, wait, Matt, Matt, wait a second. Your request was granted. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Cover skills, bro. He's, he's aggressive. <laughs> okay. He comes up and hits, bro. And and he's, he's, he's patient. I, I'm seeing more patience out of him now. He's playing the ball better, bro. First game, jitters. Second game, Jitters, he's playing way better than he did those first two games, bro. So I'm I'm seeing a lot of improvement in Terry on. Kool-Aid, I mean, I don't I don't know what it I don't know if it's the persona. I don't know if it's the uh what they already uh blessed him with without you know what I mean? But I think Terry on Arnold is our best corner on the field right now. Woo, man. Okay, okay, Dan. What are your thoughts about that? We're gonna take a little shift to this Kool Aid Damn. carry on debate. Dan, it's, you go next. I want to yeah. hear this. It's easy to say that now. I know, I know, Daquan. I know you. You played position, played at a high level. Yeah. But let me tell you this: it's easier to say that because he's getting more opportunities. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Now, Kool Aid just doesn't get beat as much. You know what I'm saying. But Terry on honor, he's getting better. I think eventually, I'm, a, I'm not ready to say he's our best corner right now. I think I'm it's Kool-Aid without a doubt. One more, one more thing, you know? bro. I, I see a, a lot of bad body language from Kool-Aid. That's what kills me about him. I'm not saying he's not a good athlete. I see a bunch of getting back to the line, huffing and puffing, not not communicating a lot. You know what I mean? I see that. I see the bad body language by him. Terry Arnold's always, he's ready to play. He's ready to play every down, bro. So that's why I say that. There's a lot more to it than that. But, I, I you know, Kool-Aid, he's, he's good. He's good at what he does, man. But I just feel like I see I see Terry on Arnold in me. So I'm comparing him to me. I like that. <laughs> smoop, All right, smoop, smoop, then Dan, uh, Chris. We All don't right, want so to hear from a safety. This, this, <laughs> this is, hey, for, your, for your information, I, you don't forget. Don't get it twisted. I, what did I come to bear my ass? You that's came in the corner. All right. I just ate too much. They moved me hey. to <laughs> so this this is my take, and and when I said that I was called crazy, and it, I I said I, I my statement was exactly this. Right now on the field, Terion is our best corner. The reason I say that he is possibly I think Terion's ceiling because of his yeah. inexperience in the position, his level that he got thrown into the position, and the consistent progression we're seeing from this kid from game uh, last year against Texas when he got thrown into the game. Up until now, this year against Texas, and then from the, from Texas to the, you, the progression 
the the levels are not the same. It's not 20% growth. You you're seeing like 50%, 65% where mm-hmm. improvement has happened. And then this last game against Ole Miss, my last part. This last game against Ole Miss, I saw uh 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 concept be thrown at, at Arnold on a third down, and they stopped it on third down, but they were beat on their side. The adjustment was made the very next drive, not necessary. I don't believe it was even a coaching adjustment because literally the, when the motion came, Arnold made the checks. It wasn't a safety check. It wasn't a linebacker check. It was Arnold made the checks, and it took away the read and forced um, Dart out of the pocket. The, the, the look was there. They were they were going to target Arnold, but his his ability to be in the right place consistently is what's making me see like the difference between him and Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid is out of position a lot, but his athleticism – is what makes him great. He he can he can recover like no other. Kool Aid can have a bad phase one and just dominate the rest of the phase. He can recover. There's not many that can do that. Arnold, all around right now, solid man. Mm-hmm. Chris, well, going back to um, his his recruitment. What did I say then when we were recruiting him? I said this boy here is gonna be um, gonna be something crazy. When he was at um, coming out of Tallahassee at um, was it Saint Saint what was it then Saint Saint Pope Saint John John Pope John, Catholic, John, Saint Pope. John Pope I think John Pope yeah so Pope he's going out of wow, so this, this dude right here is just fluid man he's just so athletic um but I always thought that he was a safety I, I always thought that he would be like a Eddie Jackson type at safety like just like a stupid playmaker but I would say this he he is. Um, I think he has more tools than Kool Aid. I think he's more gifted. Mm-hmm. Um, that's saying a lot because Kool Aid is, is a freak athlete, Shoot. but it, it just looks like Arnold is so um fluid. So, um, Peter it just Ward comes natural, the deepest, yeah. the deepest version of Peter Ward, just so so fluid. Yeah. Just the ball skills is what gets me, Chris. The ball uh-huh. skills is what's amazing because we gave Kool Aid those props, but then look at what Arnold's doing with playing the ball this year. Like, it's- what was that? Who Arnold remind me of? Who who remind, reminds me of? Who? Um, Brian Branch. Oh, with his with his versatility, because 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 Brian could have could have played receiver. I believe Terion could could be a receiver. Like by the way he moves, he runs like Calvin Ridley, but uh, playing DB. If you I watch like him run, his body movement, he looks like a lot boy. like Kareem. Like yeah, like Kevin. Those Florida boys just different, man. They show David Kendall some love. That band. Shouts out to David Kendall. Two dollars sake, it just looked all still. Love it. Yeah, he needed to just move them around. <laughs> I'm back on the outside, Justin. But so, um, <laughs> funny how that worked out, right? Yeah. You said you was a corner. Get on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but yeah, but I, I, I'm with you, D. Um, the corner. I'm not mad at you because like I I, I, I feel you. I, I think that. The only difference, the only difference is Kool Aid had that extra year of experience on him yep. where he was thrown into forced into action as a freshman. If that sure. was Terry on at the same time, then it would be a no brainer. Like Terry on, if he stayed one more year, he'll be the first corner off the board in next year's draft for sure. five in, in the 24 draft. I mean, the 25 draft. If he stayed one more season and played the 24 season, he'll be a top five pick. Uh, I, I think Kool Aid's a first round pick, but I, I think that, um, if Terry Young decided to stay one more year, he would go higher than um any corner we've had since um your boy uh, um Antonio Langle. Ter- oh, Terry Young not a true sophomore right now? No, he's no, he red shirt, remember? Okay, okay. I'm a I'm a I'm gonna shoot it to Ty Hayes and Lucian then Justin before I get my thoughts. Ty <laughs> on the Kool-Aid Terry on debate. I need I need to hear. And well, we're giving look, our MVPs already for the secondary, okay? Well, well, yeah, if we're doing that. Whenever they played Texas, I thought it was real clear. Kyrie Jackson got beat consistently. They took him out. But who was it they charged? And they felt comfortable with leaving uh-huh. on that island against Xavier Worthy, a uh-huh. dude with legit track speed. And if you remember, Ewers hit him on that throw. But Arnold was stride for stride with him. He was the only defensive back we had in that game that could run stride for stride with Worthy. So when I look at Terry and Arnold, I think a lot of you have hit it on the head. How will they stack up against each other right now is hard to tell because of what Dan said. 
Kool Aid's just not getting targeted. He had that play yeah. this past game where they targeted it real low, and he almost came yeah. up with a super impressive interception right off the ground. Just couldn't come up with it, but that'd have been wild. I think Arnold has a higher ceiling, which yep. is wild yeah. because I don't, gentlemen, I don't even know how close he is to being there. Like he is so athletic. His football IQ is so high. And the thing that stands out to me, he's the one defensive back in this defense. I genuinely feel like he could play any position in the secondary if need be. He, he's got a different type of ability, man. Like he has got a different type of juice. It's a lot of fun to watch him operate. Lushar? I'm going to go with Arnold. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, you, you guys know me. I've kind of harped on Kool-Aid the last two years myself. But Arnold just has it. He's got that look in his eye. And he's got, most importantly, he's playing the Bama standard type of football. You can see it when he comes up to tackle people. He ain't trying to wrap them. He's trying to maul somebody. Yep. And it's been, it's been a while since we've had a defensive back come up and actually want to maul somebody. And he's actually going around celebrating with his teammates not being an individual, and I kind of feel like Kool-Aid a little bit more being an individual. If we could get him to buy in and drink the same Kool-Aid that <laughs> Arnold's on, I think uh, our secondary could just be even that much more better. David Kendall, $5. Do y'all want to see college move to the NFL rules of the game? You know, two feet in bounds got to be touched if you fall down, et cetera. I know I would. Mm-mm. Nah. Just take like a targeting call out. That's nah, we good. The only yeah, thing good. I would change is, is the that um stupid clock rule where they keep yeah. clock running and those long behind commercials on CBS and <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and uh I would I would change um the targeting rule like instead of kicking them out of game, just like the second target is maybe you're going for the rest of that game for the mm-hmm. second targeting call. But one target is in the second target, you should get you know, it's football. That's going to happen. Yeah. Like, you know, you, that's why people are scared to hit now. That's why they, yep, that's yep. why everybody's going low. And then you having more mm-hmm. knee and ankle injuries. People diving low because they're scared to get that targeting call. Yep. Hey, but hey. if they change that rule, you know, we win that 2019 LSU game called Thady and Ma would have been out of bounds. Yes, sir. Yeah. But, <laughs> hey, y'all know what's something we not appreciating right now? We didn't have to hear Gary Danielson last week. Oh y'all. my gosh! Oh, yeah. No yeah. kidding. Oh my god! No love y'all just lost don't at understand. all. Like that. That was that. I actually listened to the announcers. They got it. They wasn't great. They weren't great, but yeah, they weren't I appreciate Gary. That. It, they they weren't Gary. Yeah. They no, weren't no, harping no. on every missed call. Oh, oh, look yes. at that. Melrose, Melrose how, looking bad. <laughs> how, how, how do you, guys? How do you like that? Daquan comes in here, stirs things up, drops his mic, and goes. <laughs> I love it. Hey, listen, we got Kool-Aid. some super chats real quick. Uh, David Kendall, five dollars. Reason I say that is to prepare them quicker for the next level. And Ty Alexander, I know it's early in the season, but there's a lot of hype with Malik Benson. What happened? It's coming. It's coming. The the thing is, guys, we will not be able to feature oh. one receiver with the amount of weapons we have. Malik Benson has right. doing. Ex- he's had opportunities and he's making them count. I mean, he had one tough drop, and that was thrown in the coverage. Like he got blew up on that drop, mm-hmm. and, and then oh, and then the other one, he it was thrown behind him on the crosser. Like Malik Benson, is, it, he's made he made a big catch in the, the Texas game. Um, I think he caught it on his target this past game. It's like we're going to see the the opportunities continue to present themselves. These guys, these receivers, I don't think they they ball hungry. I think they just want when they time when it's time to shine, they want to just be able to execute. I think they're bought into that thought process of just execute no matter who's out there. I want to see guys being able to jump no matter what position we need rotate. You tired? Go, go get at the Y, go get the X. It don't matter who it is. Cause we are, I miss that. I miss that. Well, Black Star, man. Huh, what'd you say? Oh, Black Star, okay. since we're talking about defense, let's talk about the linebacker core and, I'm going to give you my – let's talk about Kendrick Blackshire specifically because I think when I see this guy, his body build, his athleticism, his physicality. Thanos. I think he's not only our Thanos, but I think he could be our version of a Micah Parsons, you know, a guy that can play inside, outside, could do it all. 
Um, I think he has that type of potential on our defense. So I know we got Deontay Lawson with the injuries. We're running kind of thin on the linebacker crew. Uh, but, you know, it's his time, and I'm excited to see what he's going to do. So um, I'm going to go to our guest, um, Mr. State Trooper himself, DQ. What are your thoughts about <laughs> Kenny Blackstar? Mr. Controversy. I mean, just on the controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, what I see from him, man, I, I think he might be probably one of our best linebackers besides Lawson. Um, I think he needs to have more playing time. I want to see him on the field more. Um, him, Campbell, Campbell as well. I like what I'm seeing from Campbell. That's my um, guy. Yeah, it's my, seven, yeah, Chris. 17, what's his name? I forget his name. I think he transferred. Marshall. 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 He be, he be out of place. I don't see it. I, yeah, I don't see <laughs> it, man. I, I just don't see it, bro. I, I'm – I'm more of a, you know, Campbell, um, Blackshire, Lawson. and Lawson type of guy, man. Those are the three guys that I see that's producing. They're hungry. Them. You know what oh, I mean? Man. So that's what I see. I like it. Uh, Dan, what are your thoughts? Man, see, I, I agree with Ducoin on this. You know, <laughs> I, I said it last week, you know. Well, actually, I said it after the game that, you know, maybe Blackshire might be our uh, best linebacker. And the thing I like about him, you know, he 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 can be versatile. I think he could be a you know edge set on the run. You know what I'm saying? We could we could use him in the you know uh, as a you know to set the edge in the damn rabbits. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Kels? <laughs> oh, man. they are saying <laughs> yes, the <I> one. Mean, <laughs> hey, the corn got the gun showing. It's like you can still play, go out there. Yeah, you got a few more series on you, don't you? <laughs> The corn with the gun, that's what we're talking about. The knees. There's the question, the corn. Two dollars, David Kendall, fastest strooper in the entire state. (laughs) So, Ty Hayes. Not Rashonda in the chat, though. (laughs) Ty, what are your thoughts regarding Mr. Blackshire? You know, should we be playing him more? You know, his upside? I mean, give us your in-depth analysis. Absolutely. Look, I think that the if you're asking me the best three linebackers I've seen thus far on the team, it's 32, 30, and Blackshire. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they have played at the highest level. I even said before the season, the athleticism that Deontay Lawson and Campbell provide you mm-hmm. inside linebacker in the modern era of football, you're not diminishing any of the physicality, but their sideline to sideline speed is dumb. But Blackshire is such an elite athlete, guys. I think one of the things that we have forgot about Blackshire, and even in his tenure in high school, he has fought the injury bug time and Mm -hmm. time again. Now, luckily, they've all been separate injuries. That's kind of, I I say luckily. You you guys know what I mean there, right? It's not like it's it's a (laughs) knee, a knee, a knee. It's like he tweaked an ankle here. He hurt his wrist here. They're, They're not connected to each other, which proves good for longevity. He is so skilled. I actually live about 20 minutes north of where he went to high school in Duncanville. Like, I'm there all the time watching those games. First off, I would hate to play Duncanville. I'd hate to go back to high school. It is ridiculous what they have out there. But Kendrick Blackshire, guys, when he was like 16 years old, you should see, like, the, the whole stadium would look bewildered when he'd take his pads off. And like, it looked like that moment <laughs> from, I forget the movie, but where they hand the, the piece of paper with the crown, I am 12, right? Like the fake yeah. birth certificates that he could, bench he was warmers. ridiculous. Yeah. The bench warm. He's ridiculous, man. He needs more playing time. I agree. Mm. Loose shine. Hey, I'm happy. he He's actually showing, man. It's been a long time waiting. You know, we've all been waiting to see that that God like just, you know what I'm saying? And he bring that attitude. When he hits somebody, he get up and he lets you know he hits you. And Campbell the same way, like everybody's saying, I'm glad we are, we're seeing a little bit of rotation of mean guys. The more mean guys we have, the better our defense is going to be. And the easier it's going to be for our secondary to have easy pickings back there. Oh, yeah. Because I think – I think our secondary is about to get off these next couple games with Ooh, at least yes. two to three. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So at least Chris, at least two. Oh yeah. So Chris, I'm I'm gonna give you my comp. Right, what I'm seeing from Blackshire, I kind of mentioned he has the potential to be like a Michael Parsons in our defense. 
But what I'm seeing is kind of a young, healthy Dante Hightower. Yep. Dante mm. Hightower. Mm. Shut, your, shut your trap. To you shut Alabama. your trap. <laughs> <laughs> like, I swear you over here on my dump right now. <laughs> I, I, ooh. Uh, Coach Smook, since I stole your thunder, man, what are your thoughts? Hey, man, hit the super perfect. chat, Coach Smook. Super chat from my boy David, man. Uh, Five dollar super chat. We need more former players on the staff that knows the Bama standard and will force that standard. Bring in McElroy as a QB coach or AJ. Man, you know what? I heard it's McElroy talk man. about. I, I I heard McElroy talk about you know how he's invited into the locker room to talk to these quarterback rooms and he feels like it's just a different era. You know, it's a it's a yeah. different mm-hmm. level to the game that even they are still learning as is developing. So. It's hard to say what type of, you know, former staff you want to bring in. The game has changed a lot. Even Daquan is in here, Matt, uh, Chris, all of y'all played at that level, man. The the game has changed so much since I want 2011. The game has changed. So it's hard to say bringing former staff members if they weren't actively engaged in that evolution of the game, meaning at the professional level, at the college level, since they left the game. So it's hard to say that and just throw it out there. But I do think it will help more. Morale wise. Oh, so. Speaking of morale, <laughs> Van Van Snitch Edwards, Menzi, sir, I've heard rumors of a gentleman on this panel called Dan James, who can who impersonates an officer and does some stripping for parties. He got cuffs and a microphone. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, Dan be busting out the birthday uh, uh, cakes for them. Best laugh and tap it. <laughs> Dan, 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 muted. Dan came out you of the Dan came out of a cake at a senior retirement home about two weeks ago. Like bro man on Martin did. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 pulled, he, he pulled his side nerve. With a little nerve. both side. With a little both side. <laughs> and he pulled out his side nerve. Had to call out of work for a week. Yeah. <laughs> he just went back today. He the man at all the nursing homes in, uh, in Georgia. Tappy, Tappy, Tappy Georgia James. Down down yeah. Yes, Listen, hey, you got to get money how you can, man. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I think we, man. we we discussed the black shower. Can we go back to this secondary? Justin, what are we going to say? Sorry. My turn. That's what I was going to oh, say. Oh, my bad. My bad. My Damn. Bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah, because you already God. just took my Dante Hightower 2.0, man. I was going to let Since you my opinion the obviously doesn't. I was going to let you lead the next segment. The MVP. I, I, yeah, I want to hit that black shower, man. <laughs> <laughs> when you piss off the CEO, <laughs> you get promoted to customer. Can I hit on the black shirt? Hit the soft. I, I'm going to hit on Chris. Anyway. Go, Chris. Hey. No. I, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> I'll keep it quick so, since obviously I'm being weeded out of the conversation. No, no. I'm <laughs> the next conversation. The first thing that I see, guys, is he has a competent coach now. Kevin Steele, greater than Pete Golding. Perfect example. Yeah. Look what's going on over there the Houston Texans. Harry Toa Toa is leading in tackles right now. He has competent coaching in D'Amico Ryans. So mm-hmm. now he has a coach who can develop him, who can get him on the field, and who knows how to properly utilize him and also over. activate that dog mentality. Oh, yeah, and he's healthy. But I want to bring something to the forefront. You know, as soon as Lawson went down, Blackshire took ownership of that linebacking room. He said, you know what? I'm here, and hell's coming with me. And that's exactly what happened. The the defense play got elevated to another level. It was absolutely a thing of beauty. He has arrived, and I'm excited to see what he can do against Will Rogers this week. All right, Chris, your turn. Chris. (laughs) Um, I, I, I would say more so than Michael Parsons' role, I think it's Campbell. Michael, more, okay. Yeah, because of his coverage Parsons. ability, right? Okay. Yeah, Martin, okay. uh, Campbell's a freak, man. Y'all yeah, want see, yeah. see uh, Campbell's freak. And he got pass rush skills, too. But I, I like it. I like it. I, I like it how, uh, like Dan alluded to the other week, um, when we used to bring Rashawn Evans in fresh, the second half of games. Ooh. And and and, and Black Shot comes with that energy in the second half. Like you kind of let you kind of let Marshall and and uh, Lawson and those guys get the feel of the game. Then here comes a fresh Black Shot. The last thing you want a tired lineman wants to see, you know, late in the game. So I I, I like the energy he brings uh, when he comes when he comes uh, off the bench. But um, I just think that Campbell offers so much more versatility. If you have Campbell 30, 30 and thirty two in that middle man. 
Yeah. That's that's just next level type of and we like, haven't been we ain't even at least Weapon X Jefferson yet. So. That's and that's this this that's the quick <laughs> hot take I want y'all to think about. The fact that Lawson may not be able to go this this weekend, that opens that rotation for Jefferson to show his his worth and his his growth in his playbook. I would love to see cool Jefferson horsemen. when you talk about cover too, I mean coverage sets for your or blitz, you know, being able to have that that flexibility. Those guys, Campbell, Jefferson, and Blackshear on the field at the same time. Jesus Christ. I got a good I think Mercy we're saving Texas AM. I think we save Haynes, all those guys for Texas AM for some odd reason in my head. Yeah, I think we're feels saving it. I feel AM. it. I feel you. Who wants to answer the super track question from Ty Alexander 499? Thank you, Ty. The coin. <laughs> Hit that DQ, then we'll move to our next topic. Yeah, um, one question, man. Uh, where's Justin Haynes? Why are we not seeing him play? That's what we just said. I think they saved him. Justin play. Dan, you're on mute. Well, answer this question. Let's answer this question, uh, DQ, if you don't mind. Do you think that certain backups should be starting over current starters? Najee said a few years ago that the twos were better than the ones. Hey, man, hey, hey, Najee's not lying, man. Sometimes that he knows better than, you know, what the, the fans know, bro. Um, he's at practice. Um, I think so sometimes. It depends on who's uh, – especially number 17, uh, the, the the Georgia linebacker. Bro, Tresman Marshall. Somebody, Somebody need to be starting over him, bro. 17 is every pass play that they get hey. out of phase. It's man, he's either getting beat to the sideline, bro, or he's out of phase because he, he can't cover. He can't. So I'm trying to figure out why he's still starting over the guys that we we have behind him. You know what I mean? So yeah. R- real quick, guys. Same thing, Dow Court guy. On same. same same thing at the defensive end position. I see more production when we have 44 pain out there. When yep. we have Keenan in the middle and Otis next to Keenan, yep. when that when Keenan, that three, whew. and those guys really are getting pushed on run, and they're getting we were getting four man pressure with those three at the front. And a boy B, yes, I, I'm glad you back. I'm glad you're healthy, but you're just not getting it done. Smith, he needs to be a spot player. He needs yep. Smith needs to play spots, man. Just keep him fresh. Give him 15, 20 snaps a game, but keep him fresh. And but those three, those three engines right there, and James Smith. Oh, yep. You got to let those guys go, Tell man. You, I know they're young, think, but let them go. I think Saban is saving them. I, and I give you an example. We played Georgia and Atlanta, mm-hmm. and we had to play them. We took out Jalen. Tua comes in. He put nothing but fra- all the twos in. He Little, put Leatherwood, yeah. Najee, yeah. Uh, all the receivers. Receivers, so yeah. Saban, mm-hmm. he know, Saban has yeah. a methodical approach where he's going to unleash Justin Haynes and everybody going to be like, oh, my gosh. You know, it's going to be crazy. So, he's going to unleash Justin Jefferson, and people going to be like, dang. You know, Bama got another – it's just Saban's genius at times, man. I think he's just saving yeah. it for some, the right time. So Before we get the, the next topic, Matt, man. Brian Watson, rumor has it Pete Golden got hammered on the strip after the game and tried to break into the Mount Moore facility covered in <laughs> glitter. Oh, <geez. laughs> no, no, that was lame. That was Lane. <laughs> All right. Lane well, was at industry. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was speaking, water. Of, speaking of, of defense, Pete Golden, we kind of talked about Terry on Arnold, and we got, you know, one of the greats, the legends, Decorum Menzi in the house. Let's talk about the MVP of the secondary. And, you know, I'm going to give you my two cents. I think the MVP right now is Malachi Moore. I oh, think sure. he's a, a Thorpe finalist. I don't see another DB playing better than him. You know, that's just me. But, Daquan, I'm going to shift it to you. Who do you think is your MVP or, you know, I know you're high on Arnold. Just give me your thoughts about the secondary. Man, yeah, I like uh, I like Malachi's uh, motor, bro. Um, mm-hmm. And then he plays the star position. The star position is the hardest position to play, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, you're doing a lot of traveling. You're playing left, and then you're playing right side. And a lot of times, you don't have help. You're by yourself, man, especially in those man coverages, man. But So Malachi Moore is is my MVP at the, uh, the secondary. I like I like how he plays. Um, we already talked about Terry on. I like how he plays, man. And uh, I just I, as a whole, I just think their ceiling is high. Caleb Downs is going to be a dog, man. Woo! He's going to be a dog. 
He's a freshman. I like what I see from him. Um, but yeah, the secondary as a whole, I love it. Nice, Lushan. I mean, I can't really, can't really say much more than that. Malachi Moore is the heart of the defense right now. Mm -hmm. He's playing fast, flying around everywhere, making sure people are lined up right. But he's also keeping everybody alive on the sidelines. Like oh, yeah. when the offense is on the field, I'm seeing 13 out front yelling, keeping his teammates up. And I think that's really important. If we can get more players like that and just to share that energy across the board, I'm telling you what. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time to be a Bama fan come October, I, November. I'm telling you what. Ty Hayes, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little twist to this question. Give me your MVP of the secondary. And who's on the other end of the spectrum, the not MVP of the secondary right now? Oh, oh. gosh. Dang. <laughs> okay. Well, coming off of. Oh, I got one. Coming off of. Oh, God. Then we go. One. Go, okay. Dequan. You go. You the guest. Right. Oh, okay. Go, I already said the MVP. The worst player I'm seeing on the secondary is Jalen Key. I don't know. Yeah, I was about to say the same I thing. Don't, yeah. I don't know what's going on, bro. I don't know what I don't know why I, I don't know if he's hurt. He looks like he's hot with every week, man. Yeah, he does. Hmm. I don't know. He got every hit. Any any pile up or tackles. Anytime he got to make a, a solid tackle, where he gets up hurt. It's crazy, the man. UAB, so Alabama. Yeah, it's not correlating, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Jay Lee super got chat. Cooked. Ain't seen him since. Fan yeah. super chat. Super chat four nine nine. Dequan, can you, oh, yeah. can you pull Pete Golden over again and let him know he is under arrest for impersonating a defensive coordinator? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Ty Hayes, y'all want to get your MVP, your not valuable player, and your MVP. But MVP first. MVP is easy. It's Malachi Moore. Um, he's the experienced guy in this defense, and his presence is going to allow Caleb Downs to really flourish because of the wealth of knowledge Malachi Moore has. And Ma guys, Caleb Downs against Ole Miss, he's really starting to come into his own. We talked about this. I thought that the Texas game would be phenomenal prep for Ole Miss for mm -hmm. Caleb Downs because Steve Sarkeesian, we know how he is. He sees a true freshman. He's going to attack a true freshman. I don't care how highly you're ranked. And they attacked Caleb Downs with those wide receivers, most of which will be playing on Sundays. You look at how Lane tried to attack Downs. Tarion had that interception. Gentlemen, if he didn't catch it, there's a high possibility Caleb Hell Downs down. came down with that interception. So Downs is really starting to play high-level ball. Excited about that. But – Menzi hit it perfectly. It's key. It's Jalen key. And I don't know whether that initial injury he got early in the season, if he's just not a hundred percent healthy. But when I right. looked at the secondary against old miss, I saw a re real high play from everybody, but there was one area where it was just like, okay, that's, that's kind of the, the, the red thumb of the defense right, right now. I like it. Damn. I'm gonna give it. I'm adding you another twist. MVP, MVP, Dang. and who would you like to replace your MVP? <laughs> who would I like to replace my MVP? Wow, your MVP, you're not valuable. Player. Oh, MVP. Okay. <laughs> well, MVP it, right now it is Malachi Moore, but uh, Terion is coming on. You know, the, with repetition, mm -hmm. the more reps you will see, it could very well at the end of the season be Terion. But uh, you know, we we all know. You know, I don't like to harp on players, but we all know who the MVP is. <laughs> but uh, who would I like to see replace him? Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know that we're ready to trust anyone yet. But it could be Devonte Smith. Mm. Mm. He just had him healthy. One in there. He's not healthy yet. Right. So yeah, I I, I don't I don't know if I'm ready to trust maybe, anyone. Maybe, maybe the reason why he's not why uh Key is playing. Right, Dante's yep. not healthy. Right, smooth. Um, where's where's Jake Pope listed on the on the Ooh, roster? Oh, that's that, what I was gonna say. I would, I would, I would love love back there. Pope in that Pope room. Back there. I'm not I'm not changing my MVP from you guys. Malachi Moore is definitely the most valuable player in that secondary, if not on the defense. And I say if not on the defense because I feel like Deontay Lawson is just as valuable. And having those two be your most valuable players who are in the center of the defense, whether Moore's up top or walking down, 
they're all they're both in the center. And I feel like that communication is growing every week. But uh, I would love to see Jake Pope be thrown out there and and made the defense made simple at that level for him and Caleb Downs. You know, put them in positions to keep it simple, keep it in front of them. Because I feel like Jake Pope, that closing speed he had on Jermaine Burton on that pass in the spring game, that could be useful in this in this uh this season from what I've seen. Because it's a lot of underneath stuff that gets key, and he's just breaking on the late. Yeah, he's coming up, he's holding guys up, he's not really. You know, making big tackles. I like Trey Amos playing at the nickel too, and, and mm -hmm. give him and then more go back up over top with Downs. If we mm -hmm. we got to possibly look at that lineup. So yeah. Um, but I would if if we had to replace uh Key right now, I would love to see uh Jake Pope to get an opportunity. I feel like that kid is just ready to go out there and, and just give it his all. Energy. We remember uh sincere. We re yeah. remember. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, so and, and it's not because of his skin, cause we talk that motor is different, cause we we yeah. had he set the tone for that position, that safety position. So I would love to see Jake Pope get out there and get a chance to to just grow, get some reps. Justin, without a question, it's resounding Malachi Moore for my MVP. Uh, it goes without saying, the biggest thing to me is like you said, guys, his motor, his motivation. His give a damn is turned 150. He didn't have to be motivated. He's the energy source. He is what is giving life to absolutely everybody. And he pretty much is forcing everybody to get on page. Thankfully, this past game, the rest of the defense followed suit. My MVP, yeah, it's, it's key. He's a weak link in all this. And I have to go with Jake Pote, too. Throw him in. Get it, just get him rolling. I like the kid. And maybe uh, it's time to see her a little. I agree. I agree. Chris, your thoughts. Round us out. Well, man, I agree with everything you guys are saying. And my um, and with, with Key, I, I believe he's still hobbled. I think I think he's just hurt. And um, kind of, and he he knows once you get out of that lineup, it's hard to get back in it. So he's tr trying to fight through it. So if he's hurt, I will sit him. And um and and let one of those safety story. Um, um, he's a veteran. You just want somebody that, that's going to be smart that can cover. Um, you nice. know, back there we like, but especially when you have a, a true freshman and like Caleb Downs, when you slide Malachi down into the slot, and you have a, a high safety and Downs, you have another high safety. You pr prefer to have a veteran back there, right? Um, to making those calls. Um, so that's an older guy. So I go with story. Um. And that may, may be why Key is there. You know, he's a fifth year guy, and um, he's been around for a long time. So you want somebody that's because, like the corner tell you, football is football. But what confuses a lot of guys are is terminology and coverages. Like some yeah. coverages are are, are, sure. are hard to pick up. It's it's, it's 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 like the corner tell you about that match, that match read, that match coverage. It's like. Mm. <laughs> It, it, it's different, yeah, man. And with Coach Seven, especially and strong depth, side, man, like, strong side trying to match, pass off match. That's man. that's crazy, bro. Yeah, you, you just you just in uh, uh, but coverage is coverage. Like I, so many uh, y'all just turns to man basically. But make a long story short, uh, you just want somebody uh, that's, that's that's gonna be back there helping out Caleb, and I prefer it to be story. I think I think um, Pope's years next year. I think he's going to be a big piece to it next year. David Kendall. Shout out to David Kendall. Two dollars. Pretty boy Jake Pope needs to play for real. Yeah, I, I, I would like. I would like to see us blow somebody out in the water so so those guys can play more because we like that that South Florida game was the game that we were supposed to have seen um, the likes of of, of uh, Ricks and and um and and Pope and. Um, and Hurley and those guys, but unfortunately, we had to keep our defense out there the whole game. So, uh, maybe, maybe later on in the year before we play Auburn, <laughs> yeah. Lucian, you got a comment? Yeah, I was just uh looking at this depth chart we got over here. Um, I would, I would think you would think the most logical move to make would be uh, put Malachi back and bring Earl Little in to play star, yeah. That's what I was saying, as far as coverage was. But but if you go back to that that star like the horn told you man you you have zero room for error at the star. That's, that's why, why I he, said I said Trey. He was one of my favorite. 
you were one of my favorite playing that starter corn. You know, you was an all American. I'm running that pick for a reason. I can start. I, you know man. what I'm saying? But um, he, he'll tell you, man, like one misstep, like wrong step, and like that, like that, like he read it wrong. Um, against um Middle Tennessee, Middle we Tennessee, gave him a touchdown yeah. or a little. little simple things like that. Like you have no room for error in the slot at start, no room for error. That's why I like Malachi solidified there, and that's why Brian Branch was there last year. You, you you put your your best your, your best guy typically at the start. That's why I wouldn't mind if Terry on a move to the start. Hey, real quick, guys. Daquan has to jump out. We want to thank him for coming on to the show. Just, Didn't plan it, but we're exact. We're very excited to have had you on, brother. You're welcome back anytime. Roll Tide. He has to the bell when the number would call. Daquan, <laughs> real Appreciate quick before you go, bro. He's so tired. Tired. Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to let the people know how stacked y'all was at Carver 07, 08, bro. Hey, we were tough, bro. We were tough. We are uh, Isaiah Crowell, Jarvis Jones, hey. Jermon Fortson, who Woo! left Russell County where I was to go and play with my boy. They brought Daquan from Shaw. Bro, yeah. I mean, yeah. that those guys were top recruits in 08 class, and I was playing against them boys. Bro. I'm talking about hell, bro. Hell. <laughs> Daquan, let, let people know how they can reach you. Are you, know, Are you on well, social I media just, at all? <laughs> uh, I think, uh, yeah, I, I might um, revise my Twitter, bro. Um, just, just for this, man. Do it. So, Do it, uh, so it'll be Mizzy twenty four minutes where you find me on Twitter. Man, come back on the show, man. We like having you. I'm a follow you, bro. Man. Yeah, man. Uh, me and Justin talk all the time, man. So, mm-hmm. right, whenever he uh, y'all available, man, just let me know. Appreciate. We'll yes, definitely sir. next week for going against Bobby Petrino's offense. So, uh, mm. okay. You See know, if you can pull on. that scoot over. <laughs> 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 All right, Daquan. Uh, all right, we'll fellas. see you next Peace, week, man. sir. Be safe. Be all right, make it easy, man. All right. Daquan, Just to show y'all how how dedicated he is to the the calls. When we had him on our, on our show a couple weeks ago, his his wife literally just gave birth to their fifth child. Yep. He was in the parking lot doing the show with us. Wow. <laughs> hey, yeah. And funny, then the dog had a snake day. Funny story, the- Daquan has a, a twin brother named Antoine. Literally same height, same weight. When I say Antoine was probably the better, more physical player than Daquan, it's, it amazed us that Antoine didn't continue to play football. Antoine just stopped playing football. But if you ask Daquan right now, Antoine was was that dude, man. So just imagine if we had got the twins at Bama together. Like, it would have been some crazy stuff, man. I, I got a twin, too. His name is Van. <laughs> he man, it's me time me to only, jump. It's time to jump over only, to the, He told me his only fans was called to protect and serve. So, <laughs> Matt, it's time to jump over to the offensive side of the ball. I think we almost forgot about the guys on the other side because we've been so defense heavy tonight. Yeah. Take us into our next topic. You know, being a wide out, you know, we want to discuss how we kind of mentioned it earlier talking about spreading the ball out. Ty Hayes talked about, you know, we're hitting, Milrose hitting 10 guys, uh, you know, 10 different receivers or whatnot. I want to get your thoughts. I'm start up top with Chris and go kind of back around the horn. Chris, Justin, Smoot, Dan, Ty, Lushan, then myself. Do you think we found the right receiver rotation? And, you know, what do you think? I must put it not just do you think we found the right receiver rotation? And what do you think the right re- right receiver rotation is going to look like give me five six names that you Jeez. think should go Chris i think Dang. the rotation I, I think they found something with hell like we told y'all um that hell was going to find a role that joke was too good to keep out the field one guy that i would keep an eye on at some point in this season is shad preston he's next in line um if, if those older guys i think i think that was a wake-up call to guys like brooks um mm-hmm. And Burton obviously got the wake-up call this offseason because he's been balling. But but Burton, um, I still expect Burton, uh, Bun, Hale, Prentice, those four. Brooks still going to play. Benson. Um, and it's going to be um, one more law. You still got law. Law. You got to so get him involved. I, I just feel like they're going to kind of ride the hot hand like we did in um, – what year was that? 2011? We used that we kind of rolled. Yeah. We, we had that the rotation. We kind of just went with a high hand. I guess that's when we had DeAndre, DeAndre Wyatt and Norwood and Kenny oh, Bell. Yeah, kind yeah, of Kenny Bell. Yeah, roll, roll, roll with the uh, Mays and Hanks and all those guys. We just kind of roll with a hot hand. I think that's what we're doing right now. Uh, whoever was hot at the time. 
So though, that's what I, I expect. But uh, I, I expect to see more of hell, though. But at some point, I, I think Shaz Preston is next in line to get his chance. And don't forget, when your boy Henderson comes back, Mm-hmm. Hey. Yes. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't played this. He's been hurt. So when he comes back, it's, hey, there's going to be some table turning or something going on. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're so deep, yeah. Let go, Justin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coach Saban, a few weeks ago, said, make me play you. Force me to play you. And I don't think he was just sending the message to the quarterbacks. I think he was going through the whole roster telling them that message right now. It was uh, a call to action, and I think the wide receivers were the first to establish who needs to be starting. I think we should start a NIL T-shirt for Jalen Hale. Hell yeah. Just start with him. And then Burton is the guy who's been the most productive, the most consistent guy the entire season. He's been leading. He's, <coughs> whoever, who would have thought he would be the leader, the motivator? Well, he is. Isaiah Bond and then Prentice. And you know what? If Jacory's not going to show up, I'm sorry. You got to get it to somebody else. I appreciate the pump block this past game. That was very much needed to turn the momentum. But he's not doing what he was thought to be doing at this point in the year. All right, then. Coach Smoot? Um, Just to keep the train rolling, guys. Um, shout out to David Kendall again with the $2 Super Chat. The ball boy who became a coach showed no mercy. <laughs> Yes. Man, look, let me Shout tell you, the Dolphins. <laughs> facts, them boys was was went crazy. But um, this wide receiver group, like I said, I don't think we we limit ourselves as far as a rotation. I think guys will continue to get chances, and if you capitalize, that's just your moment, you know. Um, I think practice performance plays a lot into that that in game uh rotation. Um, depending on how guys are practicing, because you saw Kobe Prentice didn't get as many reps as Kendrick Law this week. He got plenty reps against USF early. Um, so it's, it's just those guys are just battling at those positions, and it's good to have that quality depth to where you don't see drop off, uh, no matter what the rotation is. But I do see Shaz Preston, um, beginning to start getting some opportunities with Jacory Brooks. Uh, I just don't see Jacory Brooks creating a separation that he needs to create at that X position. Um, and, and that's that's starting to be noticeable because when Malik Benson gets thrown out there at the X, we see a difference. I'm um, sorry. I forgot about Benson. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. We we tried to tell you. <laughs> but yeah, but um that 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 if we was to go with like a six man, I, I honestly believe it'll be a solid seven man rotation. We're talking about Burton, uh Barnes, Benson, Prentice, Preston, not Preston, uh Hale. Hell being your five, I feel like he fits perfectly in your fifth guy coming off the the the, the bench. Um, Law, same thing. Spot playing him, using him in run game, and um, I said Prentice, Bonds, Brooks. I said the bees and um, Burton Hill. I, I think I said all my guys that I really think going. And, and, oh yeah, and and uh, Henderson coming back, guys. I think Henderson gonna have to be patient. This is one of those years where, yes, you could be out there, but just be patient because you're an injury away from being back where you were. But right now, these guys that are rolling right now, I don't see the I don't see him being able to push into that lineup unless something catastrophic happens in practice. So that's just my take on it. Dan, real quick. Yeah, I, I think the seven you were talking about was Burton, Brooks, Bunn, uh, Benson, Prentice, Law, and Hale. That's seven. That's so that's seven. But right now, you know, I, I love it that, you know, that we're so deep at receiver because we, we're going to need it. You know, it, it's, it's um, you know, he, he's spreading the ball around, you know, so it, it's not like one of those Amari Cooper years where he was getting all the, the looks. But uh, I, I like the way that he spread the ball around to 10 different receivers. You know, it's just a matter of the guys uh, around him being patient, you know. So, you know, I think Brooks has had his turn, but I think one guy that's playing so well to you, like like you were saying, Justin, make me play you. That's J uh, Jalen Hill. Mm -hmm. right. Ty Hayes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with the same rotation Dan just gave. But one thing I will say, guys, <laughs> is right now there's one wide receiver in this room who's really establishing himself as the guy. Um, 
you look at most of the big plays, they're targeting him. You look at how they're drawing up a lot of these big plays, they're targeting him. It's Bond, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's very clear they want Bond to be the guy to stretch these defenses. And what's crazy is Burton is having a, a great yeah. year. That catch he had against Ole Miss is what I like to call a money catch. That, boom. That's exactly what that did, Matt. That's exactly – scouts, that's a, that's a catch scouts will pull up and be like, look look how he was able to be friendly to the quarterback, right? Quarterback gave him an opportunity. He capitalized. I think the wide receiver room has been impressive up to this point. In fact, I think most of the complaints we had from last year have been solved. Guys, this wide receiver room with Bryce last Ooh. year Ooh. – my goodness, uh -huh. and Gibbs? Go ahead and hand us the national championship trophy. <laughs> Ty, with, with this offensive play calling, with these the receivers are sure of what they're running when they get a play call. That's what the difference is. Yeah. Hand us the national championship. Lushan, you're Lushan. Calling. Round us out. Oh, I mean, there can't be – I can't really add much to that, but I think – Jermaine Burton has really stepped up, like Ty said, as that as that guy, and his draft stock has gone up. And I think his play and uh, his little bit of chip on the shoulder and Isaiah Bond's chip on the shoulder has kind of circul circulated throughout that room. And to me, if we're going to award a – I know this is early, but I think the wide receiver room looks the best on the offense if we're going to be, like, honest. Because the offensive line, I mean, our running backs have showed, don't get me wrong, but our wide receivers took it to heart what Saban said about securing the ball, doing their job. They're blocking well as for the most part. And defensively, how do you plan to guard seven different wide receivers all with different skill sets? And that's not even including our, our 12-man person. Like, it's, it's going to be – like like I said, Reese going to be able to be the Mad Hatter about game eight this season because he's going to have so many different options. And we're just going through the growing pains right now. Just I'm telling you, I'll be patient because there's about to be fireworks real soon. I, I think it's going to start Saturday. I agree. Justin, so where do you want us to go? You want us to go Mississippi State preview or, you know, where you want to round? Do you want to do rapid fire only fans? What are your thoughts? Hey, we got to hit th the game. This is an important game this week. You know, we just had a huge win. We showed that we could come together as a team. We're cohesive. We're playing Bama ball. Can we replicate that this week? So, yeah, this is a very important game to kind of show where we are. And this is on the road at night. Cowboy bells are clanging. Good Lord, the most awful noise in wait, college wait, wait, football. Wait, wait. And it doesn't stop. So, yeah, yeah, let's hit that and give our predictions. Don't play, I'll go Peter. I'll go first. I think this is uh, probably our most one of our most important games of the year, just like last week was important. I think it's important because it's Jalen Milrow's road test, his first game on the road, SEC hostile environment at night. You know, Mississippi State always plays us tough, so I think this is good for, you know, his confidence, Tommy Reese, if they can continue to build – and have a great game. I think we I think we'll pull this game out 34-14. My thoughts. Mm. Uh I'll go back up top. Chris James. Yeah, I think we hit the 30 point plateau. And and um just say get a and get a late pick six or something, late score to really seal it. And I'm going Bama 38, Mississippi State. I don't know if they're gonna get 17. Uh I give them 38-13. Bama. Mm. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Gotcha. Well, my biggest thing this week, you know, show that we are Bama on the road. Mississippi State is having a hard time figuring out who they are right now. One one minute they want to be grinding and pound, but they don't have the guys to do it. The next minute they want to go back to the air raid. Which is it? I think right now where there's so much indecision, we need to capitalize on that. We need to strike that. And, guys, they are very vulnerable in the defense. When you get when teams get in the red zone against them, you can all but assure that you're going to have a touchdown. 
and they can't stop the run up the middle. It can't happen. So this is a game where maybe we see a lot of more of Jace and maybe even sneak in Justice Haynes. But I, I feel like Alabama should win this game. I'm going to go 24 state seven. Smooth. Um, I go with the um, I go with the matchup. The key matchup being this week: Can our defensive line expose their interior offensive line? Meaning, our three guys up front, those three down guys, can they get consistent pressure? Um, when they drop back to pass, can they be disruptive in the run game and allow our linebackers to really be highlighted? And also, I'm gonna hop on Lucian's train with that. Uh, the secondary having a big game this this week. I feel like we're going to force them into a lot of early passing situations. And because of the pressure that um, we should be able to establish with just sending four, we'll be able to see those guys capitalize off of that with inaccurate passes, balls being overthrown or, or underthrown, um, tight, aggressive coverage on the perimeter with Kevin Steele. And I think this is a game where we see um, more points scored than expected, which is going to lead to my prediction being a 41 to 13. And and I'm saying uh, 41 because I see a pick six or a fumble recovery, defensive touchdown, defensive score this game, or special teams, one or the other. Um, so 41-13 MVP. Uh, I think somebody on the D line is going to show up this week, and I'm, I'm, I'm I feel like Jaheim Otis is about to go crazy because their interior O line is is horrible. So nice, David Kendall. Shout out two dollars super chat. Got to score early, no field goals. Got to make a habit, Bobby. Post some cards, four ninety nine. I'm with Chris. I'm feeling thirty eight thirteen. Bama. Dan, let me get yours. You on mute? You on mute? Good. I keep forgetting. Uh, I think this week, guys, we're we're gonna see the return of the hateful competitors, and we're gonna see something that we we don't see too much from Bama. It's gonna be a road shutout. I'm telling you. Mm. Looking, I'm looking at it. You know. 24 nothing Bama. Mm. But uh I think we're gonna start slow because uh unless unless somebody go uh go to Coach Reason and say, let me see your script plays and take them and throw them in the trash. <laughs> uh, <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible with the script plays. You know, oh, just get away from that. I think states only scored what one touchdown in the past how many meetings, guys? Yes, I guess this it's crazy. One touchdown. Yeah, I remember those years when we would break out after struggling early. Mississippi <laughs> State always gave us our confidence boost. Well, <laughs> now the year when Jalen and Smitty had to win that last second, that was probably the last time Mississippi State looked like they wanted to upset us. But even with Dak here, you know. Chris, you got something to say? You're on mute. Oh no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Ty <laughs> Hayes, then Lushan. Yeah, man, this is going to be a great game. Look, Mississippi State is a fascinating opponent for several different reasons. They're transitioning from that leech, may he rest in peace, air raid oh, offense to a pro-style offense. And one of the things that we've seen is that for much of the season, their offense has been all out of sorts. Will Rogers is a guy that's thrown for a ton of yards in the SEC, but through three-fourths of the season thus far, he has not looked like the Will Rogers of old. Now, that's why I said three-fourths of the season, because they're coming off of a game where I understand it was South Carolina. That South Carolina mm -hmm. defense isn't great, <coughs> but he threw 30. for nearly 500 yards. Yeah, he scored 30. <laughs> he, he threw for nearly 500 yards. Griffin, their wide receiver, he had Two. almost 300. Mm, 256. Right. So – I mean, this this is an offense that did find their stride. They're looking to come back home after taking that loss to South Carolina. They're looking at Alabama, and they see an opportunity. But this is why I'm excited about this game, because they have shown no ability to run the football, and I think Alabama's pass rush is really starting to come alive. Gentlemen, I sent you something earlier in this uh, day where the two highest-graded pass rushers thus far for the SEC both reside for the Crimson Tide. Braswell, Dallas Turner. I think they're going to feast in this game, and I think that the pressure from the interior is going to be a large reason why. On the offensive side of this, they run a 3-3-5. So if they can stop Jalen Milrow wanting to run the football, have fun with that. But I can tell you what it will do. 
they're going to have to creep those safeties forward just in the nature of their defensive formation, basing out of that 3-3-5, which Arnett really likes. Now he's their head coach. He's going to want to implement that. If Jalen Milrow gets this game going like he did last week with his legs, guys, do you realize that Alabama graded as an 88 per pro football focus and pass blocking last week? That's the highest they've graded this year. Hell, I don't know. I haven't gone back last year. That might be higher than they graded all of last year. And one of the big reasons they graded so high is Jalen Milrow, if it wasn't there, he used his legs. After a while, you can't overextend if you're a defensive front guy because Milrow will just kill you in the opening you leave. That mobility kills the pass rush. Alabama's going to win this. I think they win convincingly. First quarter will be a little bit of a feeling out process. Give me the Crimson Tide, 35 to 10. Mm, Lushan, you're on mute. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the, the, the secondary is about to put on a show. I think uh, they've been kind of held back. They've kind of been in reserve. I think we're going to see a big, big game. I'm talking at least three turnovers from our secondary, at least three. Because I, I watched there, – there's nothing that Mississippi State is going to do that we're not overly prepared to defend. I think if they go at Caleb, Caleb's going to get his first interception this game. I'm calling. I'm going to call right now. I'm going to call right now. Offensively, I think if Reese stays out of that boring playbook he likes to do in the first quarter of every game and actually comes out and just uses everybody, uses our tight ends, wide receivers, runs the ball effectively, it's, it's, it's not going to be a game. And I don't think even if we slip up, our defense ain't giving up a touchdown to these fools. Final score, 49 to 6. Mm. Hey, David Kendall shouts out $2. Bama 52 10. Wow. I like it. I like it. I like it. I just want to win because we're going to need it going into College Station next week. And that leads us up to our, excuse me, getting choked up about it. I need to stop it. Pause. Um, Only fans. Um, Ty Hayes, you, I mean, Ty and Dan, I mean, y'all are kind of in the Hall of Fame. I'm going to let Ty go, then no, Dan. They need to go last because of what they did last <laughs> week, and it shut the rest of us down. I can't even speak. Okay. Matt, you lead it go off. Go from Matt. the bottom Matt. I lead it off. You know, you know I'm Macadale all places. You know, I got football <laughs> university. But hit me up on my OnlyFans, the longest yard. <laughs> my promo code is – how to score quickly, up-tempo uh, offense. <laughs> Loose up <-tempo> offense. <laughs> you know, I, I just actually uh, changed my platform. To, uh, it's actually uh, Dark Force 69. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the promo code is keep it liquid. Oh, I love it. I love wow. it. Wow. Okay. Uh, Coach Brook? Um. Yeah, so y'all know y'all can find me on uh, Coach Smook on every platform. And before I get into all the the, the greatness of what I do, um, don't forget to tune in this Friday night, man. We'll be doing the Alabama versus Mississippi so State so NCAA revamp preview. You guys have really brought some energy to that chat, man. And I want to shout out to Justin, Matt, all the guys on, on the panel that's been <laughs> Mid the 24 on X. Okay, on Twitter. He's back okay. alive on Twitter, guys. Everybody follow. Yes, sir. Yeah. Make sure I go hit my brother up, man. But, yeah, so it definitely pull up Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, um, 8 p.m. Uh, we, we're going to kick it off again. And y'all know y'all can definitely find me on um, my OnlyFans. At, um, can't, had to get back active. Got to pay a few bills this month, but I'm, I'm offering <laughs> some discounts. Um, you can find me under my new one, my burner page, The Black Coat Steel. Um, and the promo code is uh, the D is nuts. Okay, the D is nuts. Make sure y'all, y'all, make sure y'all put in the promo code in because I don't want y'all to get charged at eleven ninety nine. You can come in early for six ninety nine. You get what I'm saying? So um, <laughs> we we want to want to just continue to support, and I appreciate y'all, man. Justin. <laughs> <laughs> well first of all before i give mine i want to remind everybody who are fans of this channel follow us on all social media at the bama standard We're on tiktok at the underscore bama standard if you've missed any of our programming hey we're here all week go back and check everything let us know how you feel but 
You can find me at OnlyFans at Backside Pursuit. <laughs> Chris, but a shout out real quick to David Kendall who is unloading his lunch quarter. money. <laughs> Thanks, David. Thanks, David. Appreciate you. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Chris K. James Sr. On Twitter at uh, Coach Chris James. On uh, Instagram at CKJ Senior 32. And, uh, man, I don't know. I don't yeah, know he's, stuck. Stuck. he's stuck. He's stuck. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, I ain't stuck. <laughs> Ty Hayes. Hey, yeah, I'm a, you know. I'm going to come back weird. Come back around to me. I know it, but I just. I'm, 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 Ty Hayes had, had, had a legendary. Fans, all the fans, him and Dan. Ty you know, had, a, had a legendary one last week. I mean, that, that needs to be put in the Smithsonian. Last week it was it was a little bit personal, but this week, you know, you guys caught me on the fly once again. So I'm sitting here, and this is an opportunity, gentlemen. <laughs> Opportunities <laughs> rarely present themselves, and when they do, you take advantage. Center screen, please. Alabama has an opportunity to prove to the SEC that they are still the dog on top. <laughs> and so this weekend, if I'm not here, if I'm not on Around the Table Sports, if I'm not on Bleacher Report, you can find me on Doggy Style on the Paris Style <laughs> over on OnlyFans, where we are going to be delivering back shots 24-7, 365. Yes. You already know where to find Let's me. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the the pressure is on Dan. The pressure is on Dan. Dan. If you need some minimum, we got Kate, David Kendall, two dollars. No problem. Uh, I'm probably negative in the bank now. <laughs> hey, then Bobby, awesome cards. Let's clap for Chris staying awake this week. <laughs> <laughs> Snaps for Chris. Always up. <laughs> Let's go, Dan. I'm up with you. I he thought reading. I had stole me, but uh, yeah, this week, you know, we got we got um, Mississippi State. So you know, you can catch my only fans, you know. Is 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 walking the dog, you know what I'm saying? But but promo code, promo code is M and M. Cause baby, I melt in your mouth, not in your <laughs> hey. All right, I'm gonna go. You're on mute, I'm gonna give you mine. All right, for this week only. For this week only, it's gonna be relentless D. <laughs> Find me around the ball. <laughs> and that's the final whistle, everybody. <laughs> Roll tide, everybody. Roll tide, baby. Roll tide. Hit that like before.